Much of the attention in the Occupy movement has focused on the nation's cities, with protesters targeting financial centers and urban development. But a group of activists in Northern California have taken the movement to a state park that is home to redwood forests and mountain meadows. California lawmakers have targeted dozens of state parks for closure due to the state's deficit. But residents in rural areas say closing parks will devastate their livelihoods. FSRN's Christina Anastad files this report. Hendy Woods is the only state park in Anderson Valley, a small community of towns nestled between mountains and farmland in Northern California. More than 800 acres of pristine forest, meadows, and old-growth redwood trees make up this local treasure. This place is one of the few places that's been preserved. 22-year-old Polly Bates grew up on her family farm right next door to the park. So you can actually be among these old, old beings in here, and it's really powerful. It's just really magical, and there's all these beautiful flowers that come up in the springtime, lots of wildlife to see, bobcats, bears sometimes. Bates is one of the organizers of Occupy Hendy Woods, three days of forest occupation to raise awareness about the park, one of 70 state parks slated for closure in California. Lauren Rex is the Mendocino Sector Superintendent with State Parks. There is a number of parks, not just Hendy Woods, but a number of parks in the Mendocino district that were slated for closure just uh, due to, there's a number of factors in the matrix, but a couple of them were operating costs and uh, actual revenue brought in. Eight parks in Mendocino County will be closed in 2012, but to people who live in rural areas, local parks like Hendy Woods are an economic generator. Putting up a sign that reads, Occupy Hendy Woods near Highway 128 in Philo, Bates says the park is an economic engine for her community. Like, our farm is right next door. We have people coming over all summer who are staying in the park, camping there, and want to come by and get some apple juice, buy some apples, interested in what we're doing. And they use the river there, and then they go wine tasting, and they eat at the local restaurants and shop at the local stores. And it's just a huge source of income for our community. It's super important. There are more than 38,000 camper nights at Hendy Woods State Park. Kathy Bailey is a spokesperson for the Anderson Valley Chamber of Commerce. That compares to our population of 3,200. So you can see that that's a lot of extra people coming to Anderson Valley that will simply not come if they can't camp there. And that's a major hit to the economy? <laughs> it's a huge hit to the economy. Uh, the economy uh, will have a very hard time uh, recovering from a loss like that. But according to Rex, the park is operating on a $500,000 budget, but only brings in about half that amount. Locals like Bailey say bureaucrats are missing the bigger picture by ignoring the local sales tax visitors bring in that keep the local and state economy afloat. And the park deficit is surprising to some, like Ted Holstein, a groundskeeper at the park for the past 15 years. We sure enough take in enough to take care of this park and sustain it. And, 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 and how do you know that? Well, if you've got 92 campsites at $35 a night and you're packed all summer long, where's that money going? It's not hard to add it up. Anderson Valley is a small community. Because of its rural nature, state funding is already limited, so people pull their resources. Anderson Valley has its own volunteer fire department and ambulance service. Last year, the area's rural health clinic lost one-third of its state funding, and the state just cut the county fairground budget. For people like Charlie Paget seekins Occupy Hendy Woods is part of the larger movement across the country against the government's failed economic policies. I also think it's kind of about drawing the line of, like, where does this stop? This is, like, it might be a small thing, and it's really, it's important to our local community, but it's symbolic of a much larger thing about what the priorities are with the budget. Paget Seekin says a progressive tax that taxes the wealthy more than the poor would solve the economic woes. Outside of occupying the park, residents are looking for ways to keep it open, including nonprofit and private partnerships. Christina Onestead, Philo, FSRN.